What's up, everybody? I'm Jason Weisenberg. And I'm Michael Weisenberg. Welcome to Weisland. Mikey, what is happening? What's going on in your world? Give my second shot of the COVID-19 vaccination tomorrow. And I am not looking forward to the after effects, but I am looking forward to being fully vaccinated. And I urge people to do it. And definitely, uh, yeah. definitely do. I mean, I, I just had mine, you know, 13 hours later, wasn't the best time of my life, but you know what? Next day you wake up, you're fresh and you, you feel a lot better. So definitely go out there and get vaccinated. I know the NBA has actually been doing a lot of the promos and they've had like all the like older, older, older players, you know, they had like, I think there's one that's like Dr. J, Kareem, Bill Russell. And I think Bill who, Russell. Who, could, who had their hand held during the vaccination? It was fantastic. Whatever it was. I, I remember seeing somebody was holding somebody's hand when they were getting vaccinated and uh, yeah, it, it was wonderful. I know Bill Russell did say it's the only shot he's not going to block. Exactly. So that okay. And that's, hey, if, William Felton Russell says that, then you should do it. <laughs> should take heed. Take heed to the player that I call or the person that I call the consummate winner in professional sports. Yeah. And it's just been a weird, it's been a weird week in, in the NBA right now as well. It's like we're at this point where people think there, you know, there could be the effect of some of those guys getting their getting their second vaccines, maybe having a having a night off, but also just some. Blow out games. I know. I don't. I don't. I uh, yeah. I, I when it when it came to like the Blazers, and it, they finally ended their their losing streak. But I I don't think that is necessarily like uh, a four game thing. Oh, so well, and also the, the yeah no they use twenty you know twenty four forty eight hours. But you know the Blazers they like to you know stretch it out. But they did they come back yeah. in a big way and actually like blow out their. Next game, I just got done. I was watching a little bit of, of Golden State Dallas, and I pondered yeah. why. <laughs> that yeah. was like a forty-point point thing. Like, like yeah, like, uh, Steph Curry's already in the car on his on his way home. <laughs> like, it's a strange season, and I, I I have to think that the blowout thing is mainly due to the awkwardness and the ramifications <laughs> of this timetable and, and shortened season and, and, back to back and you, you're getting a lot of you know we're at this weird point too where a lot of guys are, are kind of hurt or they're hurt and you're kind of giving them that rest for that last playoff push you know if you kind of know you're you're in the heat of it so definitely a lot of games you know you never know what you're going to get but some nights it's could be a bit of a blowout some nights it could be pretty competitive but yeah there are a few fantastic games yeah, it's so yeah, that's every, every, every now and then we get a UCLA Gonzaga in the NBA. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like last year, game five of the finals. Fantastic. Um, game three, I believe, of Lakers Denver. Fantastic. I thought, yeah, the playoffs had a lot of great games last, last, last year. Like, in, I think there was just a good, good energy, good vibe, vibe there. But yeah, definitely but two good teams against each other. And it turns out that sometimes they're pretty close. And then, oh yeah, hopefully, you know, Kawhi, LeBron, those guys can, you know, come back towards towards the playoffs. But this week, we're going to kind of shift our focus a little bit back to college, but then it comes back to the NBA. We are talking about yeah. the thing that is on the basketball world's mind right now. You know, it's ruining the game of college basketball. Da, 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 da. We're talking about the transfers and the transfer portal. And, you know, what? we're going to take a look at it from this kind of, you know, a longer term perspective. And A, just to clarify, we do not believe it's ruining college basketball, because as you'll see, you know, kind of based on the findings of the names we're going to mention and the players we're going to mention, really not insanely consequential. I mean, guys, guys move schools and, and normal students also move schools for a, a myriad of reasons. So it's like, yes, I love, you know, you love the consistency of the same guys showing up for your school every year. But, you know, they at the end of the day, they're people. They want to go where they think they're going to get the best playing time. Coaches move all the time, so why the hell can't the players? All those things. But then again, at the end of the day, we'll take a look at these guys, and you can, you know, let us know in the comments if you think the transfer portal is ruining college basketball, and that these these moves are just moving the needle, and we're stacking all these super teams, and da 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 da. da. Please rant. That's what comment sections are for. You can also email us at visalinepod at gmail.com. Tell us how much you love the integrity of college basketball, and since these guys aren't getting paid, we should basically. You know, 
make them sit out a year for no particular reason, and so on and so forth. But yeah, let me um, also say that the big news or the big thing a few years ago was the, you know, you had the Rice Commission and those people basically say that the whole college basketball um, payment scandal and, and all that stuff, um, which I think is probably at least quite a bit larger than what they, the scope of what they kind of zoomed in on. Um, but the, the big subject a few years ago was was one and done. And, and one and done has been a, a subject for years. Quite honestly, one and done is, I feel, first off, not a terrible thing for college basketball. And for most people that complain about it, they barely watch any college basketball. And then for the people that complain about it that do watch college basketball, it's like 20 guys. Like, that's honestly like, out of 318 schools or however many, it's 20 guys every year. Like that, it's, it's not a, a large amount. And we talked it's about like, tournament most outstanding player of the years as well. And, you know, like wooden award, it's like, really, we could have a couple guys that have, have done that for the one and done. So it's still not for right. Sure. For sure. Um, and then in, in terms of, so now that they want to give the players a little more right here as well, um, we have, you know, like uh, Vic Dital um, is all up in arms about uh, transfers. Oh, yeah. Like he, you know, it's ruining the game. And then you have the other like college basketball media coaches mouthpieces that just feel like um you know oh it ruins everything oh it makes everything so hard for the coaches that are making millions of dollars and like i i know it's a tough job market i i know all that stuff but come on coaches if you if you have to worry about it you, you don't have that much of a short end of the stick well and um, in theory, anyway if everyone just came to your school for four years and you know came in as signed as a freshman, graduated senior, you're still losing a quarter of your roster every year. So coaches are doing some, you know, have to make some changes. Yeah. And it, it's just, it's, I, I feel like it's a different way of doing things. I, I even know like, you know, oh, it should only be the case if um, the coach leaves the school, which I think is ridiculous as well, because every year players will want to transfer. And I, I think it's their right. And I, I, you know, it's a one-time thing, this one year sit out rule. Um, and then I, I also like the fact that maybe it could be like a still keep the graduate transfer, but more than likely it's, it's a one-time thing. And sometimes it's just not a fit. Right? And, and that's the thing. And why should a player have to, to sit out if it's not a fit? Um, why should they have to really give a reason at all if they want to transfer? Um, as, a, yeah. as a student, they don't care. They don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I just think, I think that the fact that there aren't many college transfers in the NBA, and we're not counting JUCO here, we're just counting like from the NAIA school to NAIA school. But um, yeah, I, I just, I feel like that's more than likely because of the transfer system. And I'm really interested to see what happens. Like maybe we will have some players. I know that there are certainly some draft prospects this year that uh, had transferred schools. I remember I was actually at um, an Oregon game watching a player who had just transferred and talking to a scout and the scout just kind of saying to me like, well, you know, like uh, when's the last time like a transfer has been like a good player in the NBA? And um, the name that immediately came to my mind was a very recent one in Brandon Clark. Uh, so I brought that up and he goes, well, the point being, you know, and <laughs> yeah, the, the, the point is that, and as you'll see through the list of players that we have that were college transfers, a lot of them don't end up being amazing NBA players, but they still can be good role players and they still are players that have an NBA roster spot and, you know, can, can provide some good things. And certainly, uh, we have a, a few specialists here as well. So yeah, we just kind of wanted to go over it. And uh, I, I just feel like with this new transfer rule, we are more likely to see a number of potential NBA players um, that 
take the transfer route. And uh, I, I think that that could be kind of a, a good thing for them. And then um, I, I honestly, I think it's going to be really kind of interesting with college basketball and it might even be a way, I know that a lot of the top teams will be after these like big transfers, then like up transfers will, uh, I think be even more of a thing now, but I don't have a problem with that. And I think that's, that's kind of interesting. And, and we'll see how much it, it really like affects the college basketball landscape, like in terms of, of championships, as we saw, like transfers certainly help the champion this year. Um, but yeah, we just kind of wanted to go over some guys that are the list of guys who were college basketball transfers there in the NBA right now, whether the transfer kind of helped their stock and, and just uh, whether it was like an up transfer and just kind of go over that and uh, get, give an idea of, of players that went that route there now in the NBA. Let's, let's do it. So yeah, it's, you know, it's a decent list. It's about 29 players. You know, it's all, well, we added yeah, we had it, but there's a few because there's a few that are kind of on that like fringe of like NBA to G League kind of kind of action. But yeah, we'll start it start it off. You know, like the first person alphabetically is the order we'll be we'll be going through is on the Toronto Raptors. We've got Kem Birch out yeah. of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Pitt to UNLV. And yeah, Kem Birch was the number eleven player in the RSCI, and. I guess you would call this a down transfer-ish because while like, you know, Pitt was certainly in, in at the time in the Big East, UNLV probably like a slightly better-ish team. Like it, it was around. I, I kind of kind of, I kind of define this as like a parallel because like, I think like UNLV gives you something yeah. different and probably gives you, you know, like a little bit more playing time and like those, those kind of kind of things and, and still a pretty strong conference. Yeah. But yeah, Kem was a, a really highly ranked or highly, um, uh, I guess, acclaimed player coming out of high school. And we know that he's like a rim protection specialist and that's what he's been really good at. Just a really bouncy, like, you know, six foot nine, six foot 10 guy. Um, and th that's kind of the, the role that he's played given in the NBA. Um, he is immediately eligible at UNLV and, um, yeah, it must've been some extenuating circumstance. Like, and th that's the other thing with the college transfer rule. Like it's just doesn't seem to really have any precedent and they just kind of, yeah, like it, it, you never know who it applies to or, or exactly where they're going with it. Um, but yeah, he, he takes a year at uh, UNLV just get, gets a little bit more playing time. And then by that next season, um, he does enter the NBA draft and I believe did not get drafted. Um, but he eventually does find his way into the NBA and um, was recently traded to the Toronto Raptors. So yeah, he and Chris Boucher, Lou Jansdorf, first game ever. Or got traded, but he... He was waived by Orlando and, and signed with Toronto. <laughs> but yeah, overall, you think like that was a good, probably a good move for his draft stock? Like, yeah, most likely. Yeah, like it, it's hard to say. But I, I, th I think with most of these, it's kind of hard to say. But yeah, like it, 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 it probably, it, it, in terms of his draft stock, let's yeah. say, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like it, it's, as far as him as a player, everything like that, like, yeah, it seemed to work out. It, it worked out in the end and in the end, like he's had an NBA career. That is, that is true. And hey, it's, it's something that a lot of players aspire to have. And then we have a uh, Kelja Blevins, Portland, Southern Mississippi yeah. to Montana State. That looks I mean, like Damian Lillard's cousin. Like a bit of a bit of a down transfer. Cause I feel like, you know, some, yeah. Yeah, I am not, I'll be honest, I'm not incredibly sure of the whole situation surrounding his transfer, but yeah, like it, it seemed like Montana State worked out and like the fact that he's gone from Montana State and he's been on the Trailblazers roster this entire season, impressive. And uh, I, I even got to see him play a game 
with Montana State when they played Portland State at Lewis and Clark College, right across from uh, a place where we know very well. Um, and yeah, I, I would have to think that this was ended up being a really good situation for him. And uh, yeah, that, you could call it a, like a down transfer going from like uh, the CUSA to the big sky, but uh, yeah, certainly worked out. Individually, Big Sky's had some had some players, but I think yeah, overall level like conference competition, probably give it give it to CUSA. And our next one is the one that I mentioned earlier, and Brandon Clark was getting some like NBA buzz when he was with San Jose State. He has to sit out a year with Gonzaga. During that year in practice, he's getting buzz as well. Um, and yeah, he like this 100% worked out. It was an up transfer, certainly. Gonzaga was a fantastic team. Um, and they do lose in the Elite Eight to Texas Tech. But yeah, Brandon Clark had one of the more spectacular college basketball seasons in recent memory at Gonzaga. Um, and ends up being a first round pick too low, if anything, and has carved out a really nice role with the Memphis Grizzlies. No one so, Gonzaga again, it an gets absolute you, transfer success story. Yeah. And then Gonzaga gets you, you know, to the main event, <laughs> like you're, you're in the big games, you're, you know, you're playing at one of the, the kind of elite programs as far as visibility is concerned. So yeah, like huge. not only playing in the big games, but playing really well in the big uh, games. Yeah. Yeah, he, he had a fantastic season at Gonzaga and uh, just a excellent athlete, really smart player, like a crazy finisher around the basket, like this 6'8", just jumping jack. Um, and yeah, he's a huge transfer success story. And it would have been great if he, uh, like, because obviously like the big holdback with Brandon Clark was that he was slightly older. Um, considering that he was a junior and everything and because of that sit out year. So yeah, if he would have just been able to come over right away, like we might have even seen him in the NBA possibly a year earlier. Um, yeah, I'll just say that it, it definitely worked out for him, but he's like, he's the case where you want that guy who is, you feel like is playing in a smaller conference and you'd like to see play against like uh bigger competition and everything like that. Like he's the poster child for that. Like he's absolutely like somebody that you want to, to up transfer. And he completely like played even beyond what he was playing when he was playing at San Jose state. And I I'll say that the year he sat out likely helped that, but yeah, like, was there any doubt that the year before, like if he would have played, he still would have been quite good. Like he certainly would have been. Totally. And then, and the, the, you know, again, with the sit out, it's like, yeah, like age is a, you know, is a factor in the NBA draft. It's a pretty big. Yeah. Thing. So, you know, it, it can hurt just basically, you know, taking another year on the clock when you're not getting to, you know, get that huge exposure. Cause usually, you know, no one's really transferring, sitting out, then going to the NBA draft. I mean, that's a pretty, mm -hmm. I don't really know other than, you know, Ennis Kander's the only player I could think of that really came to a college and didn't play. And then like, you know, got mm -hmm. to go to the draft for that, but. Moving on from Brandon Clark, we got someone who's tearing it up this year, probable six man of the year. We're talking Jordan Clarkson going from Tulsa to Missouri. Yeah, definitely another up transfer. And he, he was somebody who was getting a little buzz when he was at Tulsa, get, gets to Missouri and um, yeah, like has a, a solid year. I recall them being a little disappointing and they do not make the NCAA tournament. Um, it was he and Jabari Brown were like the two main scorers that year. And uh, Clarkson does get drafted. Um, and yeah, you'd have to say that it likely at least did the job, got him into the NBA. Um, not sure if I mentioned this, but before his rookie year, he went to OVO Bounce and um, had played like in that tournament, which is like a, a summer pro-am tournament. Um, 
it had Brendan Jennings, um, Tristan Thompson, Amir Johnson, um, like yeah, the, the handful of NBA players, and Jordan Clarkson was one of them, and he looked pretty damn good to me. So I was like immediately like, wow, this guy is like one of the standout players here and um, comes in his rookie year and does quite well for the Lakers. Um, and I, I think is really carved out his niche in, um, in Utah. No, so, yeah, another, another, I would say absolute like college transfer success story. Yeah, tran transferring up for, and then yeah, just being a second round steal you know so like someone who contributed immediately and hey this year he's you know could have six man of the year and when they you know zoom back out it's like he's yeah definitely one of the better players on this list if, mm -hmm. if not if not honestly no spoilers but maybe even the best you know based on how he's playing you know at this at the second right now yeah, currently another possible candidate and uh a really good player who certainly has helped basketball teams in the last little while is our next player, and that's Seth Curry. And Seth Curry, does going to Duke help his draft stock? Probably not, <laughs> because um, he doesn't get drafted. But yes, it, it probably, uh, I, I, I would say it likely helps his like future basketball like possibilities. Well, uh, the funny thing, so he goes from Liberty to Duke, and, and most years you would, you would say, you know, that's a great, great decision, you know, if you want to play the tournament, but actually, you know, if he would have, if this was the year, he, he would have been much better off uh, staying there, but like, he leads the, you know, he's one of the NCAA, did he lead the NCAA win scoring, or was he one of the leading scorers his freshman year at Liberty? I think he was one of the leading freshman scorers, he averaged 20.2 points per game, um, and yeah, he transfers to Duke, is, uh, does have to sit out a year, um, and immediately, like, a, a rotation player at Duke, he shoots 39.4% from three in college. Um, his last year, he is at 43.8% from three, 17.5 points per game. Um, yeah, like he, the thing with Seth is he's a little bit smaller than Stefan. Um, and he is like this kind of more off ball kind of guy. Um, and still can make pull up jump shots and everything, but he's not somebody that you're like, running your offense through or anything like that, um, does not get drafted. Um, like, yeah, I, I think kind of with that whole like same like Stephen Curry thing of like, is he really a point guard? And it takes him a while. I, I know he tears up the G League, but yeah, it takes him a while to kind of find his place in the NBA. Um, does so with, with Sacramento and then um, plays really well for Dallas in 2016-17. Yeah, a great role for Portland during his one year there, um, I, I think is a real help in them getting to the Western Conference Finals. Then was great for Dallas last year, a team that had the, at the time, the best offensive rating in NBA history. And then um, this year has been uh, really like a piece that the 76ers desperately needed and is shooting 42.2% from three, which is a little down from his career, 43.9%. Um, yeah, he's a fantastic, I think like one of the better shooting specialists in the NBA. And um, yeah, just has really been uh, helping winning teams for like quite a while now. And yeah, it might be one of those things if stock, maybe not as much as far as like a guy, but probably as far as his ability to actually get in the league and play at that level and be, you know, be prepared. I think Duke was probably, probably the call there, but yeah, definite, definite up transfer. Almost uh, like he should have started off at a, a higher level of college, but um, yeah. I don't know any technical institutes in Virginia that should have offered him, but well, I'm not sure. Yeah. God, they must be kicking themselves every day. That's, that's <laughs> I'm still mad at, you know, at Kevin, like at Oregon for not getting Kevin Love. So I can like doubly imagine how you feel if Steph Curry uh, Kevin Love was an up transfer from Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> I know he did that, but it's like I'm mad at that. <laughs> but it's like you can only imagine if you're like you let him go to this. Like, yeah, oh, that would just go. That's why I'm not a Virginia Tech fan at this moment. Um, next we got Nate Darling on Charlotte. Went from UAB to Delaware. 
don't hate the school, hate the guy who used to coach there. But um, yeah, uh, Nate Darling, I would say, it's, well, like, yeah, it's obviously a going from Conference USA to the Colonial Athletic is a down transfer, but it was the right spot for him. And he like really got to showcase and I know that he was like kind of a, a draft Twitter favorite by many last year, just with his shooting versatility. Um, he's from Canada. He played at DeMatha Catholic actually. And he um, played with Markel Fultz. Uh, he starts off at UAB, doesn't get tons of playing time as a freshman, gets a little more, well, like, yeah, he's getting a, a pretty decent amount as a sophomore and did anything. Yeah, he just decides to transfer, go to Delaware. And as a junior at Delaware averages 21 points, shoots 40% from three, but makes 3.3 threes per game. Um, shoots in the mid eighties from the free throw line as well. So yeah, he, um, and the fact that, does it help his draft stock? No because he, do, he doesn't get drafted, but yeah. does it help him get to the NBA? Yes, I, I would say so. Like, yeah, like get, get it, get he's, it. He's, he's going from Delaware to the NBA and it was off of like his skill and ability. So yeah, it, it was the right spot for him. Yeah, and getting to a place where the offense flows, flows more, more. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. The next one is one that hits a little close to home, but um, Damian Dotson, he went from, from Oregon to Houston, playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers right now. That was kind of one of those, you know, obviously did not leave Oregon on the best of terms. That was a very, yeah, it was, it was strange. situation for all, all, all involved, yeah. but, you know, so, you know, after being basically, you know, outed from the program, you know, ends up back in his home state in, in Houston. At, yeah. you know, a school that's usually, you know, pretty, pretty solid basketball school. Obviously yeah. had a great year. They have, yeah, they, and on the years he was there, they do not make the NCAA tournament. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm guessing they were just slightly like just outside. Um, but the thing that he does do, which he was always like just a really crafty scorer, but he wasn't a great shooter when he was at Oregon and he becomes a really good shooter when he goes to Houston. And I think that helps quite a bit. He plays for Kelvin Sampson. Um, yeah, he shoots 38.7% or no, 36.7%, sorry, is a, a junior at Houston. And then his last year, he shoots 44.3% um, and makes 3.4 three-pointers per game, which is just crazy. So yeah, that was really impressive. I, I think uh, it absolutely, he, he does really well at um, the Portsmouth Invitational as well and through like the pre-draft process. I think this, his like move to Houston likely is the reason he gets drafted. And uh, yeah, so I, I think it was the right move for him. Was it an up transfer? Probably not. Probably not, but I was- I, I, I have to say it, it was pretty parallel and uh, it, was a, it was a good spot for him. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's tough in this situation too, because this wasn't one of the situations where he openly elected for, for transfer. So it was kind of, you know, forced to find find a new home, but definitely got himself into a very good situation. And it's it's been it's been interesting because again, like he he's still in the league. He's been in the league for you know a decent amount of time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he's carved out a role for him. So you know, you know, definitely bounced you know a few teams, but yeah. obviously Cleveland is a team right now where you can get some find yourself getting some playing time. And then mm -hmm. next we have you know someone from from last year's draft that got himself into the first round. There we got Malachi Flynn, going from Washington State, you know, Pac-12, but to San Diego State. Yeah. And San Diego State with Malachi Flynn goes 30 and two. Like they were, they looked really damn good. They would have been a really high seed in the NCAA tournament. I they were like for a long time floating around possibly being a one seed. Um, so yeah, I, I think from being at a Washington State school that was kind of struggling in the Pac-12 and going to San Diego State, which usually does very well in the Mountain West. And uh, yeah, I, I, I just think it was definitely the right spot for him. He is one of the better players in college basketball, his one year there. 
um, shows his defensive prowess, shows how excellent he is in the pick and roll. And um, now he's playing some really good minutes for the Toronto Raptors. He, a little bit of a, a slow start, but yeah, he, he was always um, just a, a highly thought of NBA draft prospect, especially among the draft Twitter community, does become a first round pick. And I think he's going to just like be a really good player for the Raptors. Um, so yeah, I, I think that definitely was a, a great transfer for him and uh, really worked out. Yeah, I think again, going quote unquote down, but gaining so much more visibility and playing in like competitive, great games, definitely. You know, whereas Washington State, probably for the past almost, I want to say close to at least 18 to 19 years, because I want to say like they were good for a period in the 2000s, like not going to get a lot of eyes on you playing, playing up there in Pullman. Yeah. That damn Clay Thompson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Robert Franks uh, actually just got a contract too, CJ LB. But yeah, like, could he have probably still made the NBA stay in Washington State? Likely. But um, would he have been a first round pick? Maybe not. Yeah, carry, carry, carry yeah. the buzz. Then we got Anthony Gill on the Wizards, South Carolina, Virginia. So, so power move to power move. But I think again, like stronger program oh. in Virginia. Yeah, like a team that usually is, I, I like I, I would say like a middling SEC team versus Virginia, which has been a really great school for quite a while. Um, yeah. I, I think this definitely was a, a really good move for Anthony Gill. He is another player that does not get drafted, but he, um, yeah, I would say like playing at Virginia was just the right move for him. And uh, yeah, like the fact that he is now a 26 or he's a 28 year old rookie and he, um, is at least made it onto an NBA roster. So very cool. Then we got Freddie Gillespie on the Toronto Raptors. He went from Carleton D3 school over to Baylor in the Big 12. So definitely that one, I think, pretty sure we can count that as an up transfer. Most definitely. We can count it as an up transfer. And um, yeah, Freddie's just a great story. Um, was really, really good in his lone year, because yeah, he only plays one season with the Bears, or no, he plays two seasons, sorry. Yeah, he plays two seasons with Baylor. Um, and then this past season, he was just really good. Um, he's another player that goes undrafted, but I just think winds up like in a great situation with Baylor, highlighted a lot of what he could do, shows that he's a really intelligent defensive player um, and then even like has some soft touch on the offense at times. So yeah, sign with Toronto. It was a, a really good thing for him. And uh, yeah, like it, it's another kind of one of those things that shows you can start off at like a, a lower level and, and work your way up and still have some pro opportunities. And in this case, making it to the NBA. No, definitely. There's a few players that works out very, very well for going, going that route. Next, we got Brandon Goodwin, Atlanta Hawks, Central Florida, Florida Gulf Coast. Kind of a bit of a, I mean, Dunk City is, a, you know, pretty much in the rearview mirror, though. That was quite some time ago. Probably kind of a down, down transfer. A little bit, yeah. But I, I think he, he plays well for them. Um, and he was getting some good playing time for Central Florida. I'm guessing this just must have been something where he felt maybe more comfortable yeah, like, in the, uh, like getting in this, yeah, like a different situation. Yeah, and, you know, probably had the, the ball in his hands like a, a little bit more. Um, and he really improves as a shooter as well. Uh, so, yeah, I would have to say that this worked and uh, got him to the NBA. It was another thing where it doesn't really help his draft stock per se, but, um, yeah, works out for him. Then we got Jalen Harris on the Raptors, Louisiana Tech to Nevada. Jalen Harris, yeah. So he was, I, I think, like kind of on the radar at Louisiana Tech. But yeah, it, like his play in, in Nevada, I think really was uh, what ends up getting him drafted. 
Um, and yeah, I, I just think it absolutely was like the right move for him. Um, and Nevada, Nevada is like again one of those one of those teams that, although not a major conference, always plays you know pretty pretty solid. Yeah, and this is definitely like an up transfer from for him too. I I feel um, just considering that Nevada usually is in the thick of things. Uh, at this point, they have Steve Alford as the coach last year, and he is averaging. Yeah, he, he had a really good season. Uh, averaged 21.7 points per game, 3.9 assists, 6.5 rebounds. And finally, like, got that NBA buzz that I, I don't think he was getting at Louisiana Tech. Um, so, yeah, and then the Raptors pick him late in the second round and was with the – I believe he was with the 905, at least for um, some periods – a period at a time this year. And uh, – I don't know much about what he's done in the NBA thus far, but I think he's gotten in a few games. So yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see. The, I, think Raptors, I, think, I think him transferring certainly helped him get drafted. The Raptors are at that point of the season too, where obviously they've had a few injuries. Playoffs are not going to happen. So definitely, you know, a good chance for someone like Young to get some, some point in time. But move it on to Toronto again. They seem to be the team that has a, a lot of these. These guys, we got someone they just traded for. We got Rodney Hood going from Mississippi State to Duke. Obviously, you know, again, SEC, ACC. Yeah. To the ACC team. You know, like, like it, it's, it was definitely, definitely you know. It was, uh, it was cool. He got to play that year at Duke with um, Jabari Parker. They do lose in the first round to Mercer. Um, but he... Um, I, yeah, I, I would say this definitely helped his draft stock. He was a pretty like highly ranked. He was RSCI um, number twenty-seven, highly like touted high school player. Plays a, a pretty good year at Mississippi State. Um, I, I think almost to the point where people were thinking like he may go to the NBA, but decides to transfer and go to Duke and ends up being in the first round. I think this definitely helped his draft stock as well, um, and. Yeah, like shows some really nice flashes there. Shoots 42% from three, um, making two per game. Shoots 80% from the free throw line. Like Rodney Hood now, like some of the other things you kind of worried about. But um, yeah, he certainly was somebody that could create his own shot at times. Uh, you just were kind of would hope that it's not as much in terms of ball stopping as it tends to be, but he, he's still a player that like has an NBA role and likely has a few more years in the NBA. Um, yeah, just also, also, the, the, <laughs> also the Blazers, they had the, you know, like the, the where the hoo, where the hoo, hoo, hoo. I hated that. I hated it so much. <laughs> I um, like that. I like... Games when you wouldn't score. Uh, that was like the second, that was my second one. I loved like LaMarcus Aldridge on the Blazers. And they, they do like the like, do, 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 like the I love LA thing. Like when he, I like the Norman Powell psycho music. That's what I like. You know? Well, yes. The where the hood at. Yeah. That, let's just say also, I didn't see a ton of those games where they played that very much. Um, I, just, I know it was that one, but I mean, again, I haven't been to as many Blazer games recently as I, I had in fire when I was living in Oregon. Then coming up, we've got Daniel House, Houston, Rockets. Houston. University of Houston moves it on to Texas A&M. Yeah. Uh, I think this was a good move for him. And he's another player that uh, goes undrafted. But, yeah, it, I think it just worked out. And, uh, yeah, he, he, I'm sure he had his reasons for transferring. And, and in uh, SEC, you know, getting, you know, S again, SEC schedule. That oh, was always always good. Yeah. And he um at least as a junior improves his three point shooting quite a bit. Um yeah, I, I, I think uh certainly works out for him and now he like is he was like a, a pretty good role player for Houston the past few years and has been pretty good this year as well. So yeah, obviously in a much different circumstance, but yeah, worked out for him even if he doesn't end up being drafted. And then you got Elijah Hughes, Utah Jazz, ECU, East Carolina. 
up to yeah. 60. So definitely that's that's an up market move. Yeah. And I think that this absolutely does help him get drafted. I know he like, so he's from New York. He plays at South Kent in Connecticut. And I think like there was interest from Jim Beheim. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but he ends up playing his last couple of years at Syracuse after playing at East Carolina. And he, um, yeah, I, I think this certainly helps him get drafted. Shows like, you know, some shooting versatility shows, uh, well, yeah, it's always hard to show too much in the, the, uh, the zone defense, but yeah. yeah but unless you're just blocking somebody, it the shots, it's, yeah, it's tough to show up. Yeah, he was, he was somebody that got intrigue and then uh, ends up being the 39th pick by the New Orleans Pelicans, later trade to the Utah Jazz. Then they've got Taquan Jeffries, Houston Rockets. He went from Oral Roberts to Western Texas to Tulsa. At the yeah. end of the day, starting from where he did, ending where he did, Kind of a weird, like an interesting trajectory, but I think he ends on, you know, on a, on a higher note. Yeah. So he, he starts off at Oral Roberts, goes to Juco route, and then goes to Tulsa and was somebody that was definitely getting draft buzz, um, does make the NBA, um, I think, pretty immediately after not being drafted and is still there. So I would have to say that it worked out. And then next we got Cameron Johnson, Phoenix Suns, Pittsburgh to North Carolina. I remember the Ducks because he didn't, Cameron Johnson, he had like two years of eligibility. He and did. He was, immediate, he was immediately eligible and then he had two years remaining. And I remember yeah, he, the, was like, he was like a grad transfer who had yeah. two years of eligibility because yeah. he, uh, he basically, um, his freshman year at Pittsburgh, he gets hurt. Cameron had a bunch of injuries, like just throughout his uh, college playing career. But yeah, he was a spectacular shooter, was the best shooter in the NBA draft, or at least considered that. And he has been pretty damn good for the Phoenix Suns. When it was went one quite the, a bit higher than what- Yeah, it was, a shocking, it was a shocking pick that he went that high, but then you look at it, you're like, hey, you know, it's, it's working. Yeah, they, it, it, he, they saw him as a guy that they really liked and he's filled the role really nicely. Um, yeah, his last year at North Carolina, making 2.7 threes per game on 45.7% shooting from three. Um, yeah, just a really great offensive player that has some defensive ability as well, like at least isn't going to get killed there. And um, yeah, I have to say that this did likely wonders for his draft stock, uh, especially considering that he ends up going as a lottery pick. Yeah, no, definitely put him on the floor. So many of you guys have like, picked the draft. Yeah, and and one of the 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 best like clips to look at is the one where you know Kobe White, where they're interviewing Kobe White after he got drafted, and they're telling him like, oh, by the way, Cam Johnson just went eleventh, and he's like, just like so, so because I don't, yeah, like nobody really had like people liked him, but again, that injury thing was pretty talked about so no one really had him like there in the lottery kind of a little yeah bit. He, like, like he was more yeah like i i kind of expected to him to be like uh mid late first round and he ends up going lottery yeah nothing nothing wrong with that love, love to see a big big cam johnson fan here we got damian lee golden state drexel to louisville yes indeed uh -huh. and um yeah he had gotten hurt also when he was in college. Um, but yeah, he plays. Oh, yeah. So his junior year, he only plays five games. So gets the red shirt year and goes as a grad transfer from Drexel to Louisville and plays well at Louisville. Still doesn't end up getting drafted. But um, yeah, he still has played like a, a solid four seasons in the NBA since then. Definitely, and then definitely the, the up of you know playing playing for Louisville versus you know in the in the smaller league, and then we got most the, definitely most definitely, and, and he was like immediately like on the floor as soon as he got to Drexel, like and uh, yeah, he, he was definitely like there was some buzz around Damian Lee when he was even at Drexel, and then goes to Louisville, doesn't end up getting drafted, but still is somebody that obviously gets like a 
you know, summer league and ends up making the NBA uh, as an undrafted player. You know, and again, playing, playing for, you know, a bit for Golden State there because they've definitely had some roster fluctuations. And then you got Caleb and Cody Martin, NC State, respectively, to Nevada. Yes. And Caleb and Cody, I think, so Cody gets drafted and Caleb does not. Um, but yeah, they've both been with Charlotte for the last couple of years. And it's definitely like, I, I think the Nevada situation was really good for them. Um, they play in the uh, NBA like pre-draft camp. And I, I don't think either of them like kind of set the world on fire there. And I think then they decide to go to Nevada. It, it was something along those lines where like they, they both were on the radar or no, they, they had played that one year at Nevada and go back to Nevada. They had like entered in the draft and then decide to, to go back for that next year. And uh, yeah, like I, I think uh, Nevada was like a really good team with them that one year too. They, they, had, they had a few years, didn't they? Like, they had like one year, they had like four people declare for the draft, um, four or five. Yeah, like they've had, they've had some pretty strong. Yeah. I don't know about how many people declared, but yeah, their last year they go um, 29 and five and they were a seven seed. They lose in the first round to Florida. Um, yeah, they, uh, I believe Jordan Caroline might have even been like conference player of the year, but they both were really good college players. And surprisingly enough, like Caleb averages 19.2. 5.1 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 1.4 steals as a senior. And Cody averages 12.1 points, 4.5 rebounds, 4.9 assists, 1.4 steals. Cody is the one that gets drafted. He's like more of the, the point guard yeah. of the two. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd heard that they looked, they like they both looked pretty good in uh, pre-draft workouts like that final year before the draft. And uh, Cody ends up being the second round pick, but Caleb ends up joining him and making the NBA as well. So yeah, and they both get to keep playing, keep playing together. Next, we got a TJ McConnell of the Pacers. He went from Duquesne to Arizona. Definitely yep. someone I re you know remember as Pac-12 watcher of someone you really didn't like on Arizona because he was kind of just an annoying little pain in the ass guy. He's a pest. He's a pest, yeah. and yeah, he's been that in the NBA as well. Um, he had an absurd steal game this year and he's another player that's really carved out a role um yeah what he doesn't have as far as like vertical athleticism and like physical tools he makes up for in like will and just knowing where to be on the floor and really playing some great on-ball defense and getting in the passing lanes and being a, a great passer as well so yeah, he, his last year at Arizona, he averages 10.4 points per game, 6.3 assists, but I think is still like considered like one of the best players in the Pac-12. And um, he was all Pac-12 second team in 2013-14, all Pac-12 first team in 2014-15, and makes all Pac-12 defense in both of those seasons. And does go undrafted, but I think the move to Arizona at least helps him get onto the NBA roster. Like, he's, and he's 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 been there, you know. Like he's he's definitely stuck. You know, started with the Sixers, was able to you know break in there a little bit. So yeah, like he's annoying, but he's he's still around. Yeah, he's had a really nice little career so far, making NBA yeah. money. Yeah, you got Abdel Nader, Northern Illinois to Iowa State. Yes, and. Does it help him get drafted? Yes, it does. <laughs> Abdel Nader does get drafted. And yeah, Iowa works. State has been one of those schools that, uh, you know, tends to get these transfers that really help out their team. And uh, Abdel goes from Northern Illinois, plays a couple of years with Iowa State, doesn't play very much as a junior, but 
plays a, a really solid role as a senior, and he does end up being the uh, 58th pick in the 2016 NBA draft. Takes him a little while to get to the NBA, but he's stuck around for a little while and then uh, is playing with Phoenix and, and doing some good things this year. And then we got a few games that he's played. <laughs> then we got Kendrick Nunn from Illinois to Oakland, not yeah. the Oakland of California, the Oakland of the Michigan. And the only reason I know them is because in the mid 2000s, the Ducks played them once at home, once in, I think we played them at the Palace too. We played them in Detroit and they, the Ducks lost both games. Yeah. And Kendrick Nunn was one of the leading NCAA scorers. He might have even been the leading scorer, but he averages 25.9 points per game. He also goes undrafted. I think a lot of that had to do with uh, off court issues. But he, uh, and he was also like a little older, but um, as we saw last year, he was the runner up to uh, John Morant for rookie of the year over Zion Williamson, which still shocks me to this day. Um, and he will, he will, go and, to his grave what was it? He will go to his grave with that. Yeah, yeah I guess. Um, but yeah, he, uh, the, the other amazing thing is like, he has absolute like carte blanche at Oakland and he shoots 4.5 or makes makes 4.5 three-pointers per game on 11.3 attempts at an almost 40% rate and was shooting like kind of like the same level at Illinois. I'm guessing, yeah, like I'm, I'm not exactly sure what goes into the, the whole transfer and he certainly like was somebody that was talked about as a draft prospect, but yeah, it takes him, a, I think a year to get to the NBA uh, after, yeah, the whole him leaving Oakland. And um, he was a really good player in the regular season for Miami. Doesn't do quite as much in the playoffs, um, gets kind of thrust into a role. And um, I, I think, kind of helps a few games in the NBA finals, but yeah, he's, uh, I think still like, yeah, he, he's definitely a, a bucket getter, but, and still playing like 29 minutes per game. Yeah. Kind of amazing. But just in terms of like raw impact and everything like that, like still not necessarily like a guy you're completely sure has an amazing role on a winning team. And you got, you got Semi Ojale on the Celtics, Duke to SMU. So, you know, move, moving away from Duke, moving yeah. moving downward. Jemmy wasn't really like playing very much on Duke. So I, I think that that was the reason. Um, yeah, well, that's I remember getting... also like his mother or like somebody saying something about uh, the whole like situation there. Um, and he goes to SMU and, and has a really solid year there. Um, and then he ends up being a the 37th pick yeah I thought it was a second rounder does get picked by Boston has stayed with them since I feel like that tenure may be coming to an end he still does get like playing time but yeah I just uh Chevy hasn't really like found what he's really great at doing yet he does make um one three-pointer per game at 38.6 percent this year but yeah, he's still um, just in terms of like impact and everything, like uh, still kind of like just breaking even basically. Um, and still, I, I would say that his going from Duke to SMU, like he, he was somebody that was always like really athletic, really strong. Going from Duke to SMU does likely help his draft stock. Yeah, getting, getting more, more playing time opportunities, definitely something that he was not getting at Duke. We got Royce O'Neal, Utah Jazz, Denver to Baylor. So definitely Baylor again, proving that proving their, their liking of the transfer marketplace. Yes. And um, Royce is a player that does not get drafted, but I would say that he certainly gains interest at Baylor for his defensive ability. And I think that going to Baylor likely is a, uh, a big factor in him eventually getting an NBA spot down the line. 
and he's carved out a, a nice role with the Jazz over the past couple of years. Eric Paschal, Golden State, Fordham to Villanova, so definitely going into an elite program. Yes, smaller and the NCAA championship is, I would say, quite a big part of winning that NCAA championship, and yeah, going to Villanova. Pascal gets noticed at Fordham, like he he plays really well. Um, he has to sit out the one year. I believe he made the USA under nineteen team as well, or at least was in the the tryouts. But he um, is just like this undersized kind of power forward, uh, really, really explosive, and then shows like some nice outside shooting ability. So yeah, I, I think that his moving to Villanova certainly helps his draft stock and uh, ends up being a, a second round pick with the Golden State Warriors and plays quite well as a rookie, does make the all rookie first team. And um, he is uh, getting minutes this year as well. Like not as much of a role, but I think just in terms of like, it, on like a per minute basis, it has in, at least improved a bit as a scorer. Um, still not necessarily like killing it in terms of impact or anything like that in terms of those metrics, but certainly is a, a guy who will be on an NBA roster for quite a bit longer, I feel. And when we talk about, we talked about D3 a little earlier, we got Duncan Robinson from Williams. Williams. Duncan, and just a dude that can shoot the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Duncan Robinson does play three years at Michigan as well. Um, does not get drafted, but that turns out to be a giant mistake. Yeah. And he has become like this crazy movement shooting threat for Miami. Doesn't play a ton his rookie year. He's 24 years old in 2018-19, uh, but plays a lot last year. Is a great factor for Miami and uh, is playing even more this season. And uh, yeah, like one of the best like movement shooting specialists in the NBA currently. No, that's definitely a good, a good, good role once you get it because it gets you on the floor in a lot of big situations. We got Ray John Tucker, Philadelphia 76ers, Florida Gulf Coast, Arkansas Little Rock. Kind of an, kind of an interesting. My guy, how dare you skip Max Cruz? Oh, Max Cruz. Oh, my God. Sorry. Yeah. Dude. University of DePaul, Max Cruz. Yeah. Of the Miami, also of the Miami Heat. He's like, he's like kind of like a, a similar guy to, um, to Duncan Robinson. He, he was at a smaller school. He was at Lewis University, goes to DePaul. And um, he is like another one of those like movement shooting specialist kind of guys. And uh, in two seasons at DePaul, averages 18.6 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, 2.5 assists. I remember that um, Oregon ends up playing him, or they play DePaul in the PK-80. And Max Drews, a giant reason that Oregon is at the brink of losing to DePaul. Um, and yeah, just was another guy who doesn't get drafted, but certainly was on like the draft radar because of his movement shooting ability. And, uh, he plays with Chicago a bit last year, only two games. And then he, um, has been with Miami for 33 games this season. And I think is like kind of, he's on, he's, I think signed oh he's still on a two-way with miami but yeah he's still he's on the roster okay take it take it, take it. so yeah Ray John tucker as mentioned for the gulf coast arkansas little rock what are you almost doing? supposed to uh memphis as well before he decides to stick with the nba draft huh. yep and um he is a crazy athlete but yeah i think um this his going to arkansas little rock certainly helped uh, and yeah, he ends up like, he, he was certainly a name that I knew of coming out of high school. Um, yeah, is like, he's a Florida guy as well, or no, he's a North Carolina guy. Um, but yeah, goes to, to Florida Gulf coast known for his athletic ability, his defense, 
And um, yeah, he puts up some big numbers that last year at Little Rock, was thinking of transferring and ends up sticking in the NBA draft, does not get drafted, but he still ends up making the NBA and uh, played for Utah for a bit last season and is now on the Philadelphia 76ers. And then we're, we, end up, we end on a high note. We got Derek White of the Spurs, Colorado, Colorado Springs. Yes. Up to the big leagues, University of Colorado. So up definitely. And yeah, talk about a guy who, I like, I know that you say that, um, that Jordan Clarkson is the best transfer currently in the NBA, but I think Derek White could give him a run for his money, honestly. And Derek, Derek White, all, you know, get like was, you know, also at that USA basketball invite. I mean, he's, he's definitely done very, very well for himself. Yeah. And, um, just a really, really solid player. Um, a guy who takes great care of the ball, um, a good shooter. Yeah, he's, um, I think certainly part of the reason why San Antonio is probably like doing a little bit better than people had projected. They're currently in ninth place in the West. Um, but yeah. Which this year keeps, keeps you in the playoffs. So keeps like... in the playoffs and yeah, Derek White, a guy who uh, I believe also recently got a bag. Um, and yeah, that, that will start next year. He signed a, a really nice extension with San Antonio and um, a rotation guard, or like starting, like basically combo guard that a lot of teams would love to have. And uh, yeah, San Antonio, took him with the 29th pick overall in the 2017 NBA draft. And he has exceeded expectations in terms of where he was drafted. Um, so yeah, that was a great move upwards and he um, has definitely made the most of it. And then, yeah, zooming me back out, looking at the, the list, you know, breaking it down, really most of the transfers seem to be upward. Yeah. You know, you got a couple guys go, going, going down for, you know, a few, few different, reasons of better situations or, or you know kind of being forced out of schools got a couple parallel but really most of them yeah they they're people that are just swimming swimming upstream but there's not like this really correlation either of like championship all of a sudden you know changing kind of thing because really taking a look at you know NCAA tournament history of recent memory and it really looks like Luke Hancock is really the only I guess Jared Butler as well, I guess. Yeah. As, as right. a, you know, this, this past year, obviously not in the NBA right now. Those are really the two only really examples of, of transfer players winning that most outstanding player. And as we talked about with Hancock as well, it's not like it was, you know, him all of a sudden stacking this team and, you know, taking it over. Like it wasn't really his team necessarily. Like Jared Butler, this is kind of like yeah. he was one of it, the Luke Hancock had a great game. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That, that's what you're saying. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Jared, Jared Butler did transfer. He, he never did officially play for Alabama and didn't have to sit out at all. Um, and I would say, like, Baylor this year, obviously, like, transfers helped. Um, certainly with, you know, having Davion Mitchell, having Macy Oteague, um, having Adam Flagler, like, those were all transfer guards, and they all were a gigantic reason that they walloped I would say the entire field of the NCAA tournament that they played against. Um, but yeah, that, like, was it, I don't know, was it like an inherently bad thing that Baylor had these transfers? No, I don't think so at all. And, uh, you know, like I, I thought this year with transfers being able to play immediately, like I didn't see too many people up in arms about that. And I thought it was great. <laughs> I thought it was a, a really fun year. Um, and yeah, with Johnny obviously Juzang. Gonzaga, with Johnny Gonzaga, or what were you saying? I said Johnny Juzang, you know, tra tra you know, like UCLA fans were complaining about that. I didn't hear any Kentucky fans being like, oh, he would have helped us, you know, go somewhere. Like, again, I think- You didn't hear Kentucky fans say that? No, no, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> usually it all works out for everybody involved. Like, Because I heard a lot of Kentucky fans say that. But um, yeah, I uh, basically, I, I, ju I just- I'm very intrigued by this new generation of what the transfer rule is going to look like. 
And I think that it could be a really interesting wrinkle in college basketball. I, I do not think it's going to be like a poochie of uh, adding to the itchy and scratchy show kind of thing. I think that it's just going to be a kind of new wave and um, like along with name and likeness, hopefully, and just a, a new way of seeing kind of how college basketball breaks down. Um, we're seeing that some people enter the transfer portal and decide to come back, which is absolutely fine as well. So they do the, um, they do the double dip, they declare for the draft, and then they also enter the portal. So they get that kind of you yeah. know, feedback evaluation, and then they can They're really focus on, on where they want to go after that. Yeah, keep your options open. I know that it's kind of tough for some players who are like incoming and we'll see what it does to maybe like the junior college market. But yeah, for the most part, I, I'm really intrigued. Um, just going over, obviously a, we can talk about a, a few players that transferred who are in the current NBA draft. And um, I know that at least top of my mind would be the player who transferred, one of the main transfers from Baylor, which is Davion Mitchell. And um, I think he certainly helped his stock by eventually going to Baylor and uh, what happened this year. Johnny Juzang, obviously another player who helped his stock an incredible deal. And while he was like a, a highly, even Davion Mitchell was a highly rated high school yeah. player as well. But yeah, they certainly helped their cases with um, them transferring to schools that ended up making the final four. Um, there was, oh yeah, obviously uh, Quinn Grimes. And he, you can't say that he, uh, he up transferred from Kansas, but Houston was a higher seed this year and he's, he's been with a good Houston team the past couple of years. Um, I, I guess he just wasn't feeling things in Kansas. And he certainly improved a like, huge amount as a shooter with Houston, which uh, I think as we saw with like a, a Damian Dotson, like that, they seem to do a good job with that. So yeah, I, I think that, I, I, it's hard to say if it helped his draft stock, but it, he's become draftable again. And it's like after his first year at Kansas, I don't know if too many people were, were saying that. So yeah, he, um, I, I still think there are going to be more transfers who just get a change of scenery and um, help their stock in terms of the NBA draft. Um, and then, yeah, just, I, I, I'm really- and then there's everyone else. You know, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing where, again, like I, I yeah, I think they're just, they're players that want to get themselves into to more favorable situations for themselves. And it's not like this crazy thing of like, oh my God, all the, the top guys are all of a sudden going to go to like one school. Like most of the top guys are going to go to the NBA. <laughs> yeah. You know, like if you're, if you're like, so like that's why the transfer portal is like not even that that first tier of, of the count necessarily, you know, like those those top few guys, like they're, they're one and done. And then these are just other guys that want to, you know, do things to get themselves ready for the NBA or in just position to play more yeah, you know, for possible overseas or whatever their, their aspirations are. So, you know, again, well, I'm, they could be like really nice, like basically like specialists and, yeah. and guys who, who can fill a role. No, yeah, totally. And I think let them, let them do it. I'm good with it. So we, we, we endorse point. Are there any guys right now in the, in the portal that you, that you kind of have an eye on that you, that you, that you like? I like, I, I think um, Kaderi Richmond transferred from um, Syracuse to Seton Hall. I think that's an interesting one. I know Earl Timberlake is uh, an intriguing wing, just transferred from Miami to Memphis. Texas just got a, a couple good ones. Like Timmy Allen, not as much of like an NBA guy, but should be like a really great college guy. And um, Dylan DeSue from uh, Vanderbilt is somebody who has certainly been on the radar you have Kellen Grady going from Davidson to Kentucky that is definitely worth a watch. And um, yeah, I, I think there are certainly guys who are, who are going to be quite interesting. Um, oh yeah, the, the one that I just saw that looked pretty cool to me was uh, um, 
Jalen Pickett, he was with Siena the past couple of years and he just went to Penn State. So that's like an up transfer. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah, like Jim and Brakefield going from Duke to Mississippi. Th there are going to be some good ones. Oh, yeah. Micah Peavy going from Texas Tech to Texas Christian. That's kind of like a, a lateral move there. Um, so, yeah, I, I certainly think there are going to be guys who are on the NBA radar who uh, transferred this year. Obviously, Walker Kessler was um, really came on at the end of the year for North Carolina and um, goes from North Carolina to Auburn. So, yeah, like he's kind of a um, older, I don't know, I guess he, he does like to shoot, but he's like an older school center kind of a archetype, but he uh, will certainly be somebody that is worth a watch. And I, a guy that I've always kind of liked too is uh, Matt Bradley, um, who transferred from Cal to San Diego State. So but yeah, again, it's one of those like, Cal, 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 but going to like, yeah, going to like a super powerful yeah. Team. And then I'll just I'll just shout out you know the 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 genius of the group which is Devian Harmon, yes, He's the card for the draft. But he from Oklahoma. If he does come back, which probably seems likely, he will go to Oregon. So you know, yeah. got to celebrate those who are. And let's let's shout out like a couple guys who who haven't gotten picked up yet. Um, Marcus Carr is in the um, like early entrant group or. But he's still retaining his ability to go back to school. Um, he's transferring from Minnesota. If he does so, um, Marcus Bagley uh, just has announced that he still is in the um, has his name in the NBA draft. But he is he in the transfer portal. Yeah. And then uh, a couple like former five star guys who um, put their names in were. Um, Bryce Thompson and Adam Miller. So Bryce Thompson transferring from Kansas and Adam Miller transferring from Illinois. And I, I know Bryce kind of was like a little hit and miss this year. I was really surprised with Adam Miller. And um, I know that also like Mac McClung um, announced that he uh, it's still like has his name in the NBA draft as well, but is retaining the option to uh, possibly, or, did he? I don't know. I thought he. He Is might. He, he's going. He, he'd go back to Texas Tech. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he did uh, pull out of the transfer portal at the very least. Okay. Yeah. Nonetheless, he had entered his name, but yeah, now he's going back. So it could be a revolving door right back to where you, you left off. But it's just you know again, it, it gives them the, the that ability to communicate to other coaches and really just see what see what's out there for themselves. Any other final thoughts on the, on the portal? Um, it's crazy. It's a lot of names. Well, it's, I, it's college basketball. I, so I, don't, don't, I don't envy the people that have to deal with it. The but data I'm really interested to see what happens, and I, I I embrace the change. We are also very pro change here at Viseland, so definitely excited about it if there's any guys that you are in the transfer portal or that have committed to your school or people that you're angry at because they left your school let us know let us know in the comments drop us a comment here or you can also send us an email vislandpod at gmail.com love to hear your guys thoughts on the portal what you think is you know the future of basketball and really just you know what we presented to you today which is like taking a look at all these guys that have have transferred me and made the nba like it's not this list of all-star you know guys it's really a lot of role players or people that if you know carved out a you know a career you know through jason, jason also did mention that the best transfer in the history of the nba is oh, is oh larry bird larry bird yeah larry bird I didn't even think about it, but Larry Bird did start off in Indiana and goes to Indiana State, never plays for Indiana, but start off there. So yeah. technically a transfer, another transfer, or another like transfer possibility. And who knows if, if the one-year transfer rule was in place. I remember hearing Vince Carter wasn't necessarily like happy with his playing time his first year at North Carolina and was thinking of possibly going closer to home, going to Florida State. Um, yeah, never, never one known. Um, we're certainly glad that Vince did finish off his career at North Carolina, but nonetheless, like, I, I, 
I'm very wonderful. intrigued by players having that option and seeing what can happen and maybe seeing like more of these smaller school players that um, you'd like to see go up against big competition before they enter their name in the NBA draft, like doing that um, and not having to sit out that extra year. So yeah, I'm very intrigued by it. The last thing that we want to mention is um, Terrence Clark, unfortunately, uh, was involved in a car accident and passed away. He was a prospect that we had talked about, and he um, was originally from Massachusetts, uh, Boston area, and he um, played for Kentucky this past year, was injured for a lot of the year. But yeah, that was just something that has hit the basketball community yeah. in general. Um, absolutely like condolences to his family, um, his friends, the Kentucky fans. And it's just, it was just so, so tragic to see somebody that young um, who was just on the precipice. Yeah, just signed with it, just signed with, you know, yeah. with the big agency. Just signed with Clutch, yeah. Yeah, so it's so, yeah, it was really, really sad. Like it, it was like the day after the announcement had come out. And um, yeah, it was something that I certainly like thought about like the past few days. And, and you know, if you can go out and, and look up like Terrence Clark and, and see like the stories surrounding him, uh, he's a he's a player that uh I'm hoping that people will remember. Yeah, no, definitely had a good impact in, you know, in the in that Boston community too, because even Brad Stevens talked about how a lot of his, you know, how his, his kids really looked up to him. Mm. One of the guys from that, that area. So definitely, you know, hopefully the NBA does some, you know, some sort of appreciation for him. I hope so. On, on the draft, just get, again, to honor him because he did make it to that level. Yeah. You know, it's just sad he'll never get to, he'll never get to do it. But definitely condolences to him and his, his family, because that's like, Terrible, and, you know, Brandon Boston was in the car right behind it. You know, it's just, it's a horrible thing for, you know, psychological what that's going to do to Brandon Boston. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a terrible situation for, for all, for these young guys. So mm -hmm. definitely, definitely sad for him and his, his family. And we thank you guys so much again for, for always listening every week, week in and week out. And we, we can't wait to, you know, again, keep talking more basketball with you guys and getting you ready for the draft and really just learning about a lot of these, these guys as, players and as as people and i think we that's one of our favorite things to do here so thank you so much for coming if you if you want to follow us on on twitter we're at viseland you want to follow me specifically i'm at jay weisenberg you want to follow michael he's at nba draft mikey v you can always drop us a comment like subscribe if you can leave us a review on itunes or soundcloud or wherever you're listening to your podcast that's super super helpful and really just thanks for thanks for coming by and always always listening and we can't wait to see you guys all next week so take care and we'll we'll see you then